beyond congenital ichthyosis, I also had the privilege to talk about acne vulgaris. And my focus was on oral antibiotics in acne vulgaris. There are a lot of therapies for treating uh, mild, moderate, and severe acne, but one of the mainstays of treatment remains oral antibiotics. And uh, more than 75% of the time, those oral antibiotics being prescribed are tetracyclines. And so one of the things that I emphasized in my lecture was really diving deep into understanding what is it about the tetracyclines that make them so good for acne vulgaris. Yes, there is a component in which they're able to uh, target cutie bacterium acnes, but they also have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So in my lecture, I talked about the different anti-inflammatory properties of of oral tetracyclines, and this is something that is still evolving. There's a lot of research that's still going on trying to understand how is it that the tetracycline antibiotic class is able to reduce the inflammation and the nodular cystic acne that people experience. And I think this is a really fascinating and potentially newly innovative area to harness these anti-inflammatory properties. Also, I touched on the idea of antibiotic resistance. Uh, we know that antibiotic resistance is uh, a worldwide problem and there are innovations trying to overcome some of these uh, causes of resistance. I touched on that and I do think that in the bigger scheme of acne, the antibiotics are here. We do need to understand them. Uh, we can't just ignore them. Antibiotics are, are here to stay. We are using them for acne. We have been, we are, and we will continue to be. So it's very important for us to understand how they work. Granted, there are a lot of other therapies out there. Uh, oral spironolactone is a therapy I really like uh, for uh, women. Uh, it works very well. Sometimes I even use it in combination with oral antibiotics. Also, oral isotretinoin still remains a gold standard for curing acne. I'm a big fan of using all of the, the therapies out there because each patient ultimately is different. In the end, it's about the patient and what is it gonna be for that particular patient that's the best therapy. And so for me, I try to use all the medicines in a smart, intelligent way, depending on what that patient's needs are. And it may be antibiotics, it may be spironolactone, it may be oral isotretinoin, or it may be one of the may, many different types of topicals that we have for, for acne vulgaris patients. Going forward, it's gonna be really interesting to see what's new, what else can we innovate to help both acne and uh, rosacea patients going forward.